Quiet, please. Quiet, please. QuietPlease.org presents Quiet, Please, which is written by and features Paul Nero. Quiet, Please for tonight is called The Man Who Doesn't Know Everything. Allow me to reintroduce myself. I'm Charles W. Afternoon. You may remember me as the man who tried to help you out of that little scrape involving a handbag with nothing in it but an ice pick. And the man who helped bring the affair of the two alleged Venetian blind men to its bloody conclusion. Most importantly, you're likely to remember me as the man who knew everything. For example, I know a chef's hat has exactly 100 pleats. The United Kingdom's new queen is a trained mechanic. I know that the gravitational effect of the moon is slowly making our days longer. I know you're somehow picking up my radio transmission 70 years in the future. The year here is 1952, by the way. I know hot water freezes faster than cold water. And I know the door to this room will open in eight seconds. Every story needs a third act, and this is mine. Good morning, Mr. Afternoon. Good morning, Mrs. Afternoon. That's my wife. You knew her as Miss Tragasanth. I hope these little musical accents sound okay. I asked Mr. Berman to help us out again, but he had another commitment, so he lent me a record with some of his music from our previous collaborations. It seems to have gotten a little scratchy. Must speak to him about that when I get a chance. Who are you talking to, Charles? Everyone. That sounds rather ambitious, dear. You know me. I'm nothing if not ambitious. What are you talking to them about? Oh, things... We haven't really gotten into it yet. Maybe I can help. I don't think so. These are weighty matters. We've taken the liberty of letting ourselves in. As I knew you would. Please have a seat, Miss Archer. And Knuckles, I know you prefer to stand. It's my back. Hurts when I sit, you know. I do. I also know you represent a certain organization which has an interest in the affairs currently unfolding. But I'd like to caution you not to talk about that right now. What organization? What affairs? We don't need to go into that. The details are sensitive. Don't you trust me? Why, Mr. Afternoon, if you can't trust your own wife, then who can you trust? Have you forgotten we're on the radio, dear? Anyone could be listening. How is we supposed to have this talk with all those people listening in? I have your instructions and all the details you'll need in this folder. There's no need for you to speak. I already know everything you want to say. I know everything, remember? Well, that just makes us look like fools, doesn't it? You said it. Cecile, my dear, will you please fetch our guests a couple of sandwiches from the deli down the street? I know Knuckles is a BLT man, and Miss Archer prefers a turkey sandwich. You're sure I won't be missing anything? Nothing happening here, dear. All right, Charles. Hold on. I know she's gone, but it never hurts to verify. She has a nasty habit of listening to keyholes. All right, we can talk now. But all those people are listening. They don't matter. Let them listen. It's my wife who I don't want hearing this. Your marriage doesn't seem to be built on trust, if you don't mind my saying. When you know everything, you don't need to trust. That works for you? 
It did at first. No longer. What a sorry situation. Not being able to rely on the loyalty of your own wife. So what are we still here for? Patience, my dear Knuckles. The documents in the folder cover the operational details of the matter we discussed yesterday. But I have to ask an additional favor. I need you to investigate her. My wife, I mean. Don't you know everything about her? I thought I did. But she has a way of eroding my confidence. When I lose my confidence, I don't know everything anymore. I wonder why you're so full of yourself. I have to be, Knuckles. I have to be. I wonder if any of us could know everything. If only we could be as supremely arrogant as you, Mr. Afternoon. I don't know. Huh? We don't have much time before Mrs. Afternoon returns. So you want us to put a tail on her? I need you to find out what she's been up to. How you do that is up to you. What are we looking for? Infidelity? Oh, how I wish I only had to worry about something as trivial as infidelity. I suspect she's up to something far more sinister. I do know that my life is in danger. From her. Yes, from her. Cute little thing like her. Appearances can be deceptive. We're talking about the woman who casually executed Orville Venetian. Venetian? I used to work for him. Hey, I wonder if she on a competing payroll. This is more than a little favor. Sounds like dangerous work. What can we expect in return for these additional services, Mr. Afternoon? Assurance that our other plans will reach a mutually profitable fruition. And information. What kind of information? Details of the activities of rifle organizations. The secrets of powerful and wealthy people. Bank vault combinations. Whatever you need, within reason. Mm. I think we have a deal, Mr. Afternoon. Perhaps you're wondering how I ended up involved with these seedy characters, and what we're up to. Let me take you back to yesterday, when we first met. Yes, I can take you back in time, through the magic of radio. You come alone? Not packing any heat? Of course. I understood your terms perfectly. Brave. Not at all. I know no harm will come to me. I know you'll be very interested in my proposition. Bring your associate out, please. Archer! Safe now! So, Mr. Afternoon, is it? It is. So what's your big idea? And exactly what do we get out of it? How would you like to be director of the FBI? Seems like it'd be a conflict of interest. Me being part of an organized crime syndicate and all. Indeed. But name any federal post and I'll get someone from your organization installed in it. And how's you gonna do that? Quite simply... With some help from your organization to implement some of the legwork of my plan, I'll be president. Imagine what this country could be with a president who knows everything. Imagine an economy and a foreign policy harmonized by perfect decision making. Imagine a president who knows the exact full consequences of every action he takes before he takes it. Why... In a few short years, we'd have a paradise. And what makes you so sure 
You can waltz in and overthrow the United States government like that. Yeah, people have tried that. It ain't never come out pretty for them. I have a detailed plan. And I know for a fact that with your assistance it will work. I know you were briefed on the fact that I know everything. Prove it. I know your name is Anthony Fulbright Henderson, but everyone calls you Knuckles. I know the world's smallest dog weighed four ounces. Today's launch code for the president to initiate a nuclear strike is Tango Elephant Echo. 60% of human brain matter is fat. You've loved three women in your life, but none have loved you. It takes 364 licks to get to the center of a Tootsie Roll. Archer has a birthmark on the inside of her left knee. Reno is... Enough! You don't Santa's. have to try to make me feel stupid. I even know how and when you and Archer die. Interested? No, he's not. So why don't you just use your knowledge and the money it can bring you to jump into the election? Hmm? Eisenhower wouldn't stand a chance. Because I know the people won't vote for me. They don't like a know-it-all. I make them feel uncomfortable and inadequate. Besides, to make proper use of my capabilities, I'm going to need more power than a conventional president. So it's treason, then. If saving our country from itself and ushering in a new era of prosperity built on perfect knowledge is treason, then so be it. But I think it would be treason to have this power to improve so many lives and not put myself in a position to do it. I know neither you nor your associate nor the rest of your organization will have any problem with it once you consider how it works to your advantage. We'll need substantial assurances. And you'll have them. You'll have them. Hey, who that? I think maybe she been watching? Better grab her and find out what she's up to, Knuckles. Wait, stop. What? That's my wife. Wait here. Charles, what a pleasant surprise to run into you. Feels like such a small city sometimes. What did you just stuff into your handbag, dear? Oh, just a little present. Odd-shaped present. I won't spoil your surprise. I don't like surprises. And you don't normally get them because you always know everything. Except with you lately. Somehow you always seem to know how to cut me down to size. So that'll make the surprise nice and special. Well, I'm out here on business, so I should get back to my colleagues. They look like an interesting pair. Come on, introduce me. This, this is my wife, Cecile. I, I don't want you to bore her with business talk. Understood. Hello, Mrs. Afternoon. I'd love to hear all about your business. And you, Mr... Nuck. Mr. Henderson. He's Nuck Henderson. Delighted to meet you, Nuck. I don't think I've ever heard that name before. It's, uh... Well, it's getting cold, and we really ought to be going. Perhaps we can wrap this up another time. Charles, invite them by the office in the morning so you can finish up your business dry and warm. Yes, dear. Good idea, dear. You're probably wondering why I'd let you in on all that. Truth is, I know there's nothing you can do about it. After all, this is the distant past to you. Whatever is going to happen for me already happened for you. There's only one person who can stop me now. I brought the sandwiches like you. Oh, they're gone? They just left. Sorry to waste your trip, dear. That's okay. I'll eat them. Remember, I know you're going to die of overeating, dear. But not until I'm 82, so I can eat as much as I like before then. Logical as ever.
Hello, you've reached the office of the man who knows everything. Yes, I understand. Charles, you'd better take this one. Hello. This isn't the best day for it. If you insist, I'll be there in 30. Going out? The people need me. Seems there's a situation across town that requires my skills. All right, Charles, take your time. I can hold down the fort here. You think you know me, but you really don't. So I should introduce myself. I'm Cecile Afternoon, née Tragesanth soon to be Tragosanth again. Listening to Charles, you'd probably think I'm an airhead. You'd probably think my habit of listening at keyholes is because I'm a gossip. You'd probably be extremely puzzled as to why I shot Orville Venetian. Well, it's time for you to hear my side of the story. Charles thinks I'm a secretary because that's what I became for him. I did so three years ago at the behest of our government, in my capacity as a federal agent assisting the investigation into the activities of one Charles W. Afternoon. You see, when a man says he knows everything and he seems to be able to back it up, it becomes his government's business to monitor how he uses this power. And when he started playing around with gangsters, we quickly realized he had no moral compass at all. You'll remember he was content to let Orville escape and it fell to me to rid our city of its most notorious crime boss. I was afraid that was going to give me away, but Charles is too self-absorbed to think much about the motivations of other people, and I was keeping him distracted with my romantic advances. That'll be for me. Yes, he took the bait. He'll be gone at least an hour. I'm going through what he's got on his desk right now. I'll report back. Who was I talking to? Just another agent who's helping me wrap up this case. It's been a long three years, but I can almost sniff the finish line. The big break was yesterday. Didn't learn as much as I'd have liked to, but I think I caught him off guard and put another chink in his armor of arrogance. Agent Tango Sierra, radioing HQ. Headquarters here. Agent India Uniform receiving loud and clear. Proceed. He's having a sort of meeting in an alley. Can't overhear him because of the rain and traffic. I think that's why he picked this place. But I can describe his associates. A tall, thick man about 35 or 40. Dark hair, a scar on his left cheek. Blue jeans and a brown corduroy shirt. A woman of similar age. A foot shorter, curly blonde hair. Chanel handbag, navy blue dress. Hold on, we got someone cross checking those descriptions. I'm not much of a lip reader, and Mr. Afternoon has his back to me, but I've made out a few words his associates have said. Treason. The woman said treason. We think you're looking at Anthony, Knuckles, Henderson, and Tabitha Archer. They always work together. They're bad news. Their sympathy has been active in city politics. Add the word treason, and we may be looking at something political here. With the election coming up, we don't need to tell you how dangerous Mr. Afternoon could be. It's vital that you get to the bottom of this before he acts. I can arrange a call to take him out of the office for a while tomorrow so you can go through his things. Okay. Your country is relying on you. That's a lot of pressure you're throwing at me. I'll do my best. What did you just stuff in your bag? Let me see it. Oh, just a little present. You haven't forgotten it's our anniversary next week, have you? Odd-shaped present. You sure that's what it is? 
I won't spoil your surprise. I'm not used to surprises. So that'll make it special. What brings you out here, Charles? Well, I was just... Um... I was out here on a, a business matter. Those must be your business associates over there. Come on, you can introduce me. Um, th this is my wife, Cecile. I don't want anyone to bore her by talking about business, please. Copy that. Hello, Mrs. Afternoon. I'd love to hear about it. And you, Mr... Nuck. Mr. Henderson. His name's Nuck Henderson. Delighted to meet you, Nuck. I don't think I've heard that name before. Is uh, 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 Choyman. We have to go now. Charles, why don't we invite these lovely people around to the office in the morning so you can finish up your business night and dry and warm? I... No, I'm... Um, well... Fine. How much did Charles see? I'm not sure. How much does he know? Well, not as much as he thinks he knows. Come in. Just who I was hoping to see. Oh, we came back because I must have left my umbrella. Ah, there it is. Sit down, both of you. No, no, we just came for the umbrella. We'll be on our way. Sit down. I'd like to stand. My back. I said sit down. We need to talk. Where's your husband? Out of the way. Do you mean sh Let's put our cards on the table. You first. I'm a government agent. We know you two are part of a crime syndicate which my husband is exploiting for his plans. And make no mistake, he'll exploit you too, and then he'll discard you. Whatever he promised you, you're not getting it. Prove it. Prove we've done anything wrong. Everything you've said in this room today has gone out over the radio. Everyone listening is going to hold you responsible for whatever happens. But Mr. Afternoon said the people listening don't matter. Mr. Afternoon often assumes people don't matter. He's wrong. People do matter. If you're trying to make us an offer, let's hear it. We're not after you. We're after Mr. Afternoon. That's why I went to work for him three years ago, and that's why I married him. You help us, and I can get you immunity. Help you how? First, tell me what Charles is planning. He wants to be president. Knuckles. I don't want to fry for that stuck-up bastard. <sighs> oh, well, it was a dangerous game, and I should have known we couldn't trust him. How was Charles planning to become president? A coup d'etat. Actually, I haven't read the details yet. It's all in the folder he gave me. I believe you were here for that. You get us a signed promise of immunity from a district magistrate? And I'll give you the folder. Agreed. If you'll do just one more simple thing. This afternoon, I want you to call Charles. Ask him to meet you at 6.30, in the same alley where you met yesterday. You won't show up. We'll take care of it. Won't he know? He's afraid now. He's coming down off that high horse of his, and pretty soon he won't be able to tell you what's two plus two. <laughs> All agents are in position. He'll be able to get in, but not out. Let me take him alone. Are you sure? I know what needs to be done, and I know I can do it better alone. I've been on this case from the beginning, and I want to take it through to the end. Just yell if you need backup.
Hello there, Charles. What? Hands up in the air, please. My dear, I know our marriage is at a rough patch, but is a gun really necessary? I think you know what I plan to do, Charles. I've been having suspicions. I'm sorry it has to end like this, Charles. But you know how to escape prison, and you might even weasel your way out of conviction with everything you'd know about the judge and jury. Wait! I know! <laughs> Good night, Mr. Afternoon. The title of tonight's Quiet Please story was The Man Who Doesn't Know Everything. It was written by Paul Nerum, and the man who spoke to you was Paul Nerum. Lindsay Townsend played Cecile Trugasson the afternoon. Virginia Hargrove was Archer. David Loftus was Knuckles. Agents India Uniform and Gulf Echo were portrayed by Steph X and Emily Eichel. Music was composed and played by Albert Berman. The theme for Quiet Please is taken from the second movement of Cesar Franck's Symphony in D minor, as performed by the Detroit Symphony Orchestra in 1964. This program is licensed for free reuse and redistribution. 